Despite the overall consensus being that Namjoon and Megan's collaboration was good, just look at this shit bruh. I'm not a vengeful person but I am petty and this is one of those. Ha! <laughs> ha! Moments because leaving these kinds of comments is not valid criticism, it is not anyone defending their faves from big bad armies, this is just blatant jealousy and bitterness. So, I would usually let the really good song by Flo play with my intro, but I really don't want this video to get copyrighted because then YouTube heavily restricts how many people watch my videos and I want as much as I can get for this one so you got this explanation instead. Sorry. Blinks being bitter doesn't require much reason. It's just sad really. Their behavior undermines a lot of what Blackpink do. If they truly had confidence in their faves Blinks would carry themselves like they do, not constantly attack other groups and fandoms who just so happen to be doing well, especially other girl groups and girl group fandoms. And mice, since the very beginning have run purely on being shitty people, they're even mean to Espa when the girls' actions don't match the image they've convinced themselves that the girls exist as, for these reasons mice can never and will never do for Espa what armies have done for BTS. They can't even do what Blinks have done for Blackpink despite the girls having the talent and charisma to, and at this point I think they're starting to realize that. Namjoon did not use a black scent, he just has a deep voice. K-pop fans who likely are not even black jump at the chance to weaponize things that happen to us just to spite idols they don't like and as a result water down the definition therefore impact of wrongful behavior pushed onto black people. These people don't care about black people they just care about tearing others down because ain't no way you heard Namjoon in this collab and thought. He's trying to sound black. There's a difference between forcing yourself to use African-American vernacular English, words that are completely foreign to you and urbanizing your verbiage to mimic the way African-Americans speak, versus, obviously, being respectable enough to learn the way in which African-Americans have cultivated our culture around music and how we play with sound resulting in a cadence with similar charisma as a black person, Jack Harlow is another non-black rapper to do this. It's all emulative, but this is what separates appropriation to appreciation. That is just our M's voice. He has a lot of musical dexterity so he can pull off pop songs like Sunflower and then turn around and pull off a hip-hop song like Neva Play and no matter how much people try they can't villainize the well-known for being good character of a man who's 30 because he used a black scent when he was 19 and didn't even benefit off of it financial like a lot of your faves. Him alongside his other members were poor as hell trying to make it in an industry that did not even talk about appropriation to even understand the complexity of it. This is why culture appropriation and black scents are far less excusable now than they were 10, 12, and 15 years ago. It was a literal different time. That's not an excuse, but is why slowly but surely, South Korea is being made aware and held accountable for race-based taboos that exist outside of their home homogeneous country, because K-pop fans are not homogeneous. And whether people acknowledge it or not, a large reason for this is because BTS have grown from their past and a lot of armies are holding them to that. They're not without flaw, they're not perfect, but if anyone has anything bad to say about Megan, June, or their collab, well, they can choke. But interactions like this, yeah, I can laugh a lot at shit like this. Chewy, 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 my sweet lollipop faced Chewy. Her solo debut was not only weak, it was the weakest one from a twice member so far. And this is really frustrating to me as a once, because I've seen Chewy at her best, and her best is far more than what she gave us. It's one thing for one of your faves to be amazing, and other people not realize it, it is something completely different. When one of your faves is amazing, they just don't realize it. Don't get me wrong the song isn't bad, it's listenable. But you can't convince me that Chewy believes she's worth or capable of a super special all of nothing debut based on a very forgettable track like Runaway. And maybe JYP only gave her a small budget. She could have still invested her own money into creating something better. The song and concept weren't bad, just disappointing. And lastly let's talk about Meow's debut, I'm talking about my individual opinion and some things brought up to me by my mutual muffin pop. I don't know who needs to hear this because I didn't know people were out here defensive about it, but I should have figured because all YG stands do is fucking whine. But the black label is still a sub-label under YG, them planning to separate one day doesn't change the fact that the black label is still to this day significantly funded and dependent on YG. Every dollar the black label makes significantly goes to YG, because of the large amount of money and publicity YG puts into the black label's existence, every creative decision made either musically, conceptually, or sonically impacts YG, and YG has a rightful say in everything the black label does. Whether YG chooses to utilize the power they have over the black label or not, for these reasons Meow is in fact made up of YG idols. So no one needs to spam people clarifying that Teddy intends to separate from YG someday because he hasn't yet. 
so Meow isn't separate from other YG idols either. With that being said, I made a post right when their debut was airing, I said that I predicted their debut would be better than Baby Monsters, but I don't know how much better because I was confident in Ella Gross's pre-debut popularity doing a lot for the group. I don't think any idol has ever debuted with millions of followers before. But I was wrong. Sonically, I still do think Meow is better than Batter Up, but Meows didn't perform anywhere near like I though to Wood. And despite thinking Meow is better, I still didn't like it. And I wasn't expecting to because with the exception of two or three Somi songs, I don't like a single thing attached to Teddy Park's name. I genuinely think he's so bad. How does he not have writing or producing credits for Meow, but still manage for his group to debut with a concept and song that feels and sounds like any other YG group? There's no pizzazz, nothing amazing, surely nothing special. Not even the bare minimum of being good. The instrumental was fun, but that's all I'll give it. And this is YG's greatest offense dating back to Blackpink's debut. YG is known for basic formulas, outdated tracks, and recycled material. It's getting tired and stale. Those YG stands are keeping them afloat for now. But just like how Rose did Jack, eventually you gotta let a dead bitch go. I said it before, and I'll say it again. If YG wants to mimic anywhere near the same success of Blackpink, they need to think outside of their box and especially conceptually, for the first time ever, need to debut a group distinctively different from others they already have. If they did this, they could easily dominate once again, maybe even have a girl group empire. Because let's face it, the girl groups are doing the damn thing for YG Entertainment.